Hi, today I'm going to show you how to create an assessment using Smart Response. So, in order to use, create a, an assessment, you need to use Smart Notebook uh, to do so. So, you you basically use Smart Notebook as your interface, and then you give the assessment which you have set up in your teacher tools. So, the last time we I talked, we set up a class or set up our gradebook. So, as I when I go into that menu for Smart Tools in my bottom right hand side, I'm going to click on my teacher tools and this automatically pops up. And so when you the first time you pop up, it's going to it's pretty much going to start in your anonymous mode. And so in order to start your math class or start your class that you created, you're going to click on your gradebook and you're going to want to start the class. So that's the first step. At this point, students can then sign in. So the last time we had our students import uh, through their student ID. And so once you hit sign in, students are able to sign in with their unique username. So the first time that you use Smart Response, you might have to find a class. And in order to do so, you use the arrows on the Smart Response as so. So click on find a class. And for this time, test 2014 is what I've created. And you can see test.teacher. And so my first part of your test is going to be what it is. Uh, 2014 is what I called mine. And so this is where my students are going to enter their IDs. So they would enter their, their unique six-digit ID number that we use here at school to, uh, to, um, to get into Smart Response. I have, I just, I'm going to use mine because I created one for myself as last name, first name, Mr. Emlet, and sign in yes. So once the students have signed in, it's going to say, welcome to test 2014, because that's the name of my class, Emlet. So, and the kids will see their name there when they sign in each time. So, once they've signed in, the next step is for you to start the assessment. Well, before class, during your planning time, what you're going to do is create an assessment. Well, there's multiple ways to do this. The first way that I'm going to show you is I'm just going to take a quiz that I already have. And so, I have this quiz that I created in Microsoft Word, which I could import this from Word to, uh, to Smart Notebook, but I'm actually going to do it a different way right now. I'm just going to paste, copy paste that quiz here. And so here's my quiz that I want my class to take. It's five questions, and I want it to be on one page where the, the students can work at their own pace, they can get through these five questions, and then I might have a fast finisher for them. So in order to get them to, to create a quiz, what I need to do is I'm going to use my response menu and I'm going to go to create an answer key. Once I do so, I'm going to call it multiplication of threes. And I don't know if I can have the apostrophe. Threes quick check as my title. And then I have five questions. So number one is two times three. So if this is a mul uh, not a multiple answer. This is a number, fraction, or decimal. And so the right answer for two times three is, and I'm going to just going to enter my answer and click add and notice Next to number one, six comes up. So I've set six for number one. I'm going to set the, the rest of the answers below. Set 12. Oh, I messed up that one. So for number three, I want to set 27. And I'm just typing this into the keyboard. And then I want to do another one. So number four is notice number four I have as a multiple choice answer. So number four, I'm going to click on multiple choice here. Notice I can change my answer choices from anywhere from two to 10. So 10 answer choices. I only ha I have four, so I'm going to go to four, and I'm going to select, select the right answer. So three times seven is 21, so I'm going to click on B. Number five is true and false, so I want to go to true or false. And three times five is not 14, so that's a false statement. And so once I've done my five questions, I've created my title. All I'm going to do is cr click on create. And so once I've done so, it'll take a moment, but you can see my quiz has been created. Now. What I did not, what I neglected to do there, I created my quiz actually on top of my other one. So I'm just going to add a page so that I can have my students actually see this and not get, uh, and not get themselves confused. I apologize for that. So I'm just going to click on the add a page and I'm going to move that there. And I'm going to go back and just paste my quiz again. So there's my quiz. So this is what I would show my students, this page. and before they can actually do that, they don't need to see this, this slide at all. This slide is completely hidden to them. They don't need to see this. This is not important to them. Either are any of the other pages. These are not really important. 
Now notice I did not add a question to my page. Some people may feel it's necessary to add a que their questions to each page. I did not. I just created an answer key. This is going to be a quick little check that I can see who understands multiplication times, multiplication times three or whatever my skill is for that day. So if, if I'm not too concerned what the answers are, I can just see here, okay, um, Johnny knows all five, so he's obviously someone I don't need to work with. But you may feel more comfortable because later on when you, when you actually analyze your results, you will s can have the s questions set right in. Otherwise, you're going to have to be flipping back and forth. I don't really, that doesn't concern me too much, but it might be something you want to think about. And you'll, that'll make more sense here in a moment. So let's go ahead and I'm going to click on the smart tools. Your class is already signed in. And over here it says start this assessment now. So I have a couple choices before I actually hit start. So I can have students um, answer the questions at their own pace. And so that's what they're going to do. And I can also show feedback. So they, I could do this two ways, a couple ways, I mean. You could do feedback after you stop cl uh, collecting responses. So after you hit stop, after all questions are answered, so the, the, after they answer their last question, it'll tell them if they're right or wrong. After each question is answered, so if they make a mistake, that kind of limits them. They can't go back if you choose this option. Or don't show grades at all. I like to keep it on the after I'm, st I'm done. I typically do it on there, but you can do whatever you, you choose. So I'm going to click Start. Notice the assessment has started. It's in progress. The students are looking at this page. I might have this, minim or this on a full screen mode, and I can use my uh, keyboard to lock the page, to lock it. So the kids are taking the assessment, which I'm going to take right now. So th this is what the kids would be doing. Two times three, six, enter, or they can use their arrow key. They can do it in any order they want. They don't necessarily have to do one, two, three, four, five, six. They could skip around. Number two, I'm going to make a mistake. I'm going to do 16. Number three, we're going to do 27. Number four, let's do multiple choice answer A, even though I know that's incorrect. And five, T and F for true and false. Five times three is 15, not 14, so I'm going to put... That is a false statement, and I'm going to click Finish. So, notice I had to click Finish twice, and it says Submitted. After your answers have been submitted, I, and all the students are finished, on this tab, I can see who I'm waiting for. Everyone who signed in is finished. Until they all hit Stop, you can see which students need to work. And I'm going to click Stop to show that I'm finished. So. When you have a whole class taking it, you're going to see a bar graph here and details of which students got what. So if I look here, I can get a quick view that um, I got a 60%. I got three out of the five questions correct. So what I can do now is I can just take the information from there and go, or as a class, we can go through each one, and you're going to see an individual bar graph. Notice the student gets to see the check or the X on their smart response, and this is what they would see in front of them. They know they got this one wrong. They know they got this one right. And we might go through and say, you know what? We really made a mistake. Everyone messed up number two. Let's really focus on number two. And so this question, we can go back to our original question, three times four, and say, oh, we definitely need to work on that one. And so it allows me to, do, uh, to actually see that in a clear way, in an immediate way. And finally, the last thing I want to show with you is after the class has submitted their answers, if you go to your teacher tools, this class is still signed in right now, and I go to assessments, I'm going to click on this multiplication of threes quick check. I'm going to click on results, and it's going to show me the class results right here. And I can, uh, I can sort the list so that I can see exactly who got it and who didn't. And so this is where differentiated instruction can come in. I would probably have to be working with myself after this. I would say, oh, I need more work. If I'm only getting 60% of those questions correct. And so it's a really quick way to see which students got it, which students didn't as a class. And then I might be able to target in on the two or three who did not uh, understand that skill and be able to move on with everyone else to something more difficult. 
or the next air, uh, area in my content. So I hope this video was helpful. It was a little, a little longer than normal, but I appreciate you listening, and um, I hope that, again, that this, these videos are helping you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask again, and uh, thanks for watching.